let's talk about the Python API. The Python API is Python in C. It allows you to be able to Python in C plus in C or C plus plus, so you can access the Python in, so that you can either embed application in Python in your application or extend the Python interpreter so that you can wrap your C applications function so that you can call your application from C uh, from Python. So we just talked about why we're going to do this. It's, we're going to be able to access the Python interpreter. Now let's talk about how we're going to do this. There's two ways. You can either write, you can either write an extension module in C and by doing this what you're doing is basically writing a quick snippet of a set of code that you're going to be able to call from your Python program. Everything is still in C it's just that it abstracts it in such a way that Py you can be in your Python interpreter and call C function. That's the first way. The next way is to write your main program, your C++ program, C program, but instead you can call Python functions from C. So to the, the, the most popular convention is to just write a Python extension. When, when you get down to actually coding this, you're always going to want to include the Python header file. And this header file is in turn going to include all these other sets of files. And you want to include this before any other header file because the, this Python header file has predefined variables, micros, that need to be set up a certain way. So if you include a file before the Python header file, it could possibly conflict variables defined in here. So that includes checking to see if you're running and Linux, Windows, or Mac, or what have you. There's a couple of general conventions you have in Python, and one of those is naming conventions. Um, every fun Python function that's visible to the user, the name begins with the PY or underscore PY. Exceptions are only for structures. Some structures don't follow these conventions, although some do, like for example, the pi object structure. Um, examples of this convention is the variable is the function uh, Python parser. And what this does is let's say you are writing a Python module and I'm not going to go too in depth with this but let's say you're writing a Python module and you call a C function that you're writing the module for, so that you'll be able to call your C++ or C function from Python. What it does, what this function does, go through all the parameters passed to the C function and converts it from Python objects to usable C data. Another function is one that builds fun that builds variables from C data types to Python. So that's what's going on with these two. But these are just examples of the general kind of conventions that you see in Python in terms of the API. And here we're saying um, everything begins with the PY. And you also want to in avoid using py or underscore py in naming your functions because you want to prevent any possible confusions that may follow. Python objects are a way of a type of an abstraction. It's um, everything in Python of course is an object so a Python object is kind of like an opaque uh, way for Python to um, represent data types and allow C functions to access Python data. Python objects, every Python object, which everything is an object, including integers, string, doubles, all that, they all live on the heap. And the heap, of course, um, if you look at a general program, it follows this convention. You have the text section, which is the code. Uh, this is the data sections, uh, initialized, uninitialized, and then initialized data. And is here, and it grows upward, and the stack grows downwards. So every Python object is declared on the so everything is created dynamically, and that's why it's really important to have uh, data management. When you're inside the Python interpreter, everything is being cleaned up for you whenever it's not being used anymore, and we'll get it, get into that uh, here in a second. I want to mention that Python objects, of course, uh, the, every Python object is derived from a py and of course it's an initialized data so there's always this uh, little star next to it because it's a pointer it's a pointer to a python object so it's created always on the heap python objects um, are described with a type and they're described with the reference count with the type the type describes what type of object it is it can be a list a a, uh, a dictionary 
it's helpful. Um, it can be a double integer, you know, a whole bunch of um, types. And to check to see what type they are in C with the C API, you can use pi list and, or just pi the type of object you want to check to see if it is, and then the rest of the syntax. And so what you do is you pass it a object and it returns turns zero if it is that type or returns negative one saying that it's not and these are other types you can also check against of course you, all you're doing here is just changing this uh, string here to check the, against what type you're uh, wanting that object to be with reference counting what we're doing is making sure that a certain amount of uh, reference counts if it doesn't have any counts Reference counting is a way of keeping track of how many references there is to one object. So you can have one object, but you can have a reference count of five. So that means five different variables are referencing one single object. And so what you're doing is when you're done with referencing a particular um, object, you go ahead and decrease the count. And when you're decreasing the count, you're saying, I'm done with this object. When it comes to the point where nobody has a reference to an object, Python goes ahead and deletes the object for you. So reference counting when you're doing Python extension or Python embedding is real important to make sure that there isn't any memory leaks. Because if there is memory leaks, you could eventually run into a segmentation fault. Now to do reference counting, you're responsible for keeping track of the reference counts. So when you make a ref, when you start creating objects of type pi objects, list, tuple, directories, um, directories, if you start making objects, you're going to want to increase the increase the reference counts and decrease the reference count appropriately when you're using it and then when you're done. Now with Python, what this one does is increase reference by one, and pi decre uh, decrement function is by using this macro. Now you can also use the pi x uh, decreasement. What this does is make sure that it, if, even if it is a null reference, it goes ahead and deletes that reference anyways. Now let's talk a little bit more in depth about reference counting. Uh, Python describes it as an ownership of references. So what this means is that you, you own references. That means whenever you create an object, you don't own that object you own the reference to the object so you're responsible for managing the references and you share the actual objects so I'll recap real quick you create an object the object doesn't belong to you it belongs to python but the name the symbol that you use let's say you say create an object x that object x lives inside of python and you just own the reference of X. You don't actually, you just share the, the actual reference pointed to by X. So when you're done with the variable name X, you want to use this function when that variable is no longer needed. Exceptions. Exceptions are a way of dealing with problems, uh, dealing with errors. And Python, a, a number of Python functions, they raise errors. Uh, and or I mean, your functions that you write may also raise errors, and that indicates that something went wrong and it needs to be handled. So when a problem does occur, what you want to do is decrease references that you own so that everything can be cleaned up appropriately. And you want to return an error code. And the error, error code is usually a null, negative one, or false. Now when your application whether it be a, a module or a, an embedded application, when an, an exception is, uh, when an exception occurs, your function is in either two states. And, and the first state is an exception has occurred, and the second state is an exception has yet to occur. And with this, um, you can use the function uh, error occurred to return to see if a an exception has been raised. And if, if, if an exception has been raised, what you get is a reference to that object. While if an object, if an exception has yet to be raised, this function just returns null, telling you that there is no problem. The next function is used very um, commonly to 
go ahead and raise an exception. So if you're running uh, your application and you're noticing there's a problem that you want to inform Python, you're going to go ahead and um, call this function and give it an appropriate type. There's a number of types available. You can check on the Python homepage for a number of them. And you can also describe the message of what error actually happened. Uh, examples of the Python objects types that you can use for the exception is include um, an actual a generic exception or standard error. Those are just examples. Next, after you're done setting an error or after you're done setting an exception, you can also clear an exception by calling Python error clear. So a typical thing that will happen it happen will be that you'll call a, a function A will call function B and function B for some reason or another may raise an exception so it raises an exception using this function and then it'll return an error code when a function is and then it'll return an error code returning back to uh, function A so we here we return control back to function A what function A needs to do is call Python error occurred and what that does is check to see if an error did occur checks the error and then decrease all references that it has to any objects or that A created and you don't want to raise another exception because what we're gonna do is keep propagating the error and keep, so A will return to its caller and then from there um, everything should be handled so the only number of times that an exception is raised is where that problem originated not to subsequent returns Please help support this channel by subscribing and rating this video. Thank you.